So we have a trend. Zip, zap, zoop. And it's a right angle trend. The side opposite the right angle is called the hypotenuse. But that way too long, so let's just call it uh, C. And we'll call the other two sides A and B. Well, Pythagoras theorem says that for any right angle triangle, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is one of the theorems with the most proofs in mathematics, hundreds of proofs, literally hundreds of ways to prove this. And the types of questions you get on this are not really hard, but there are some ways the examiner can manipulate the questions to trick the students out of some marks. Let's look at some questions. Find the length of the missing side. What side is missing? That's the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So here's the weekend. By Pythagoras theorem. Some topics in mathematics is like a shonen anime. Before you do the question, you need to call the move by Pythagoras theorem. Then you write the formula, then you substitute your values. It's just important that we get C correct. A and B could be anybody. So C is missing, so we write back C, but A and B, which are the other two sides, 4 squared plus 3 squared. C squared is equal to 16 plus 9, because 4 by 4 is 16, 3 by 3 is 9 squared, mean multiply the number by itself. C squared is equal to 25. This means C is equal to the square root of 25, which is, which means C is equal to 5 centimeters. I really want to write it on any day, but I'm running out of space, so I'll just write equal to 5 centimeters. And by the way, practice writing a statement like this with all equal signs underneath each other makes it easier for the examiner to correct and easier for you to check for mistakes. Let's look at the next problem. This time the missing side is called X and notice the missing side is not the hypotenuse, it's one of the shorter sides, the longer of the shorter sides. By Pythagoras theorem, B squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. Why am I writing in pink? C is 13, A is, let A, let's make A X, B is 5. And just go through with the algebra. If x squared is 144, x will be equal to the square root of 144. Do I have space to squeeze in this 12? And we are in meters. These are some of the level one questions they start you off with, right? When you beat the boss and you go up on the next stage, you'll give you a little tougher questions. It wouldn't work out like this perfect all the time. Let's look at the tougher question. Ooh, I like it. So the first thing you need to do is find x. You have these two sides of this triangle, so you'll find x and then you need to find y because you'll have these two sides of this triangle. Find the value of x, then find y. Nice. Why Pythagoras theorem? In this case, c is 26. A, let, let's make a the x. And B would be 10. Uh, and we have X and we have X being the square root of 576, which turns out to be a nice 24. Hmm. Since there are no units, we can just put units, X equal 24 units. That's fine Y. In this case C is Y. But x, we already know x, x now is 24 and y is 20, uh, b sorry, is 20 this comes down to y being the square root of 976 which is, I don't know 31.24 and this is the two decimal places. It actually is pretty fun. Stay Remember to practice. It can look easy in the video and then you can do it yourself um, pressure. Next video is going to be on sine, cosine and tangent. So cut to our trigger in the ratios we're going to uncover that truth about that and then 
If you are looking for some more advanced chicken and veggie, check out this video I did on bearings and look out for the next video soon. Hopefully I can get that bite tomorrow or something. Press like and subscribe.